welcome let me please know in the comments that you can see me you can hear me well yeah it looks like yes great welcome uh, we are going today to see Valentine garden but not only uh, for I don't ex do not expect there is someone who doesn't know me but my name is Katerina I was born in Prague I live in Prague all my life and I love Prague so now let's turn the camera you can meanwhile think about uh, again the zoom strange is there so I have uh, too much sorry I don't know why this happened I'm not able to change the setting so anyway I'm starting at the little town square uh, I haven't been here with you or with you a long time at this area particular so I decided that I will show you here so on my right hand is the street with the church of Our Lady Victorious with the statue of baby infant Jesus that's here then this building with the door through here goes to beautiful Vrdba garden that is 100 years younger than Wallenstein garden we are going to see today this direction that's the direction straight to Charles bridge on a little town so a little town bridge gates that's the old tower that belonged to the bridge from 12th century which is gone and the higher tower the bigger one so the small one 12th century the bigger one here for the charles bridge from 14th century and this is the lower part of Van, of a little town square with a couple of beautiful palaces check this one with the statues at the top and one very very famous chick singer opera singer emma destinova i don't think that you have heard about her but in in our country is quite famous but she lived like 100 years ago yeah so she lived in the apartment here and i wanted to show you as i'm here also my favorite it's more like christmasy decoration so check this strass glass christmas tree this is an antique shop however the trees they are not much antique they are more or less recent however 7500 divided by 20 something you have dollars divided by 25 you have amount in euros so quite beautiful trees trust ones i have the tiny one which was quite cheap anyway behind it you have the garnets traditional czech garnet very dark red and very tiny little stones so that's just short entrance here this building it's the main building of a little town it's not called town hall surprisingly it's called little town beseda uh, i have no translation for the word beseda it has a couple meanings and one of them is place where people gather together so that used to be place for municipality now there is a concert hall above and very nice restaurant and cafe with recommended quality food here in Prague so Malostranská Beseda and what I think it's really interesting when you look up you see these towers so this is the appearance of the building from 18th century however uh, I have a picture maybe I can post it if I find it on computer from year 2004 but the building is all pink and no towers only the roof like this pink building no towers and which were added like later to look back how it looks before so down here is this restaurant cafe and a music club I've been there I know about twice for for some concert today is a Thursday that means the markets day not only but local markets at the place some wooden stuff loksha which is something like old Czech word for pancakes stuffed this is some wooden uh, wooden for honey yeah you put this in the honey I believe you all know this that's if you don't recognize I believe people from Italy especially will definitely recognize the type of the wood it's olive tree olive tree and that's some baklava some 
type of Arabic desserts, loksha. So these are the potato pancakes, Czech, old Czech word, it's loksha. And stuffed with, with whatever you can have. So it's potato pancake, stuffed with some meat or whatever else. So this is more about the food, this area with kombucha, cheese, marinated cheese cube, cubes, fresh cow milk, uh, different I wines, cafes, flowers, vegetable. So that's the market every Thursday at the place here. Again, pancakes in this form. Yeah. And by the way, the building behind it, sorry. The building behind it, it's former Jesuit school. We have been one couple, maybe a year, couple of months ago to the San Nicolas Church. Part of it is this building of former Jesuit school. And that's um, at the moment, it's part of Charles University and it is my school. That's where I have studied my final exam I took exactly at the room where these windows are. This room had special shape. It was not like normally room have rectangular. So this was like rectangular and then partially circle because it was going around, around the dome there. There was even a balcony. So we used to play some, always making jokes about the shape of the building. Uh, police here, something is going on in my school. Who knows, hopefully nothing nothing dangerous and the building on my right hand now that's the greenish yellowish building it's a part of parliament almost all the buildings around the square like uh, that side are offices of parliament and this one is called smiritsky palace and uh, if you are following czech history it's mostly fight about the uh, between Catholics and Protestants, the biggest one being the 30 years war, which we will talk about at the, at the garden. But it started with throwing people out of the window. And exactly at this palace, our burghers, citizens, nobles went together, climb up the hill for the castle and throw Catholic officers out of the window. So that's where it all started. That smells beautifully, all the food here. And I recently discovered how much I love pomegranate. So that's also very nice. But let's go, let's go the direction to Wallenstein Garden. I mean, well, this is back the Beseda building, the one uh, which is like a town, used to be like a town hall, now more restaurant, music club and quite popular place for local to gather. This is a beautiful engraved building and behind it we see the golden sun of a church of St. Thomas. It's a busy place and by the way this is the way up Neruda Street up to the castle. So that's one of the oldest streets in Prague and all around here are offices of uh, members of parliament. So a lot of cameras, one camera at, above the door, second camera here. So a lot of cameras guarding the place. And one of the traditional old restaurants is here. It's called Ushnelu. So it's quite popular. Schnell was the name. So Ushnelu is just at, at the name. And mm, I have like mixed feelings about it. I'm not sure how good it is at the moment. I've been there only once and I don't think it's that popular as it used to be before. However, good place, good location. And I like this house sign, which is connected with the, with the hunting. So deer and a hunter having a little speech. I'm sorry, probably, he's, the, the hunter is saying, I'm sorry, I didn't want to kill you. And hopefully he haven't. So these are the, the all around on the left hand side, cameras, another one, another one for the parliament. Wallenstein Palace, the place where we are going, is also part 
of the parliament building. You can see these buildings are being joined with these bridges from one palace to another. So let's go this way. Still, this is already a little bit more quiet era, even though there is one famous hotel, Three Oystriches House. Three Oystriches House, which is supposed to be very modern inside by one famous Czech architect, Eva Jiřična. She did also some buildings in London, where she was during communistic regime. She made some realization in London. And here we are, the famous house at Golden Pretzel. Golden Pretzel House. So another beautiful house sign. Uh, have I told you three ostriches? That's a mistake. Three ostriches are next to the Charles Bridge. This one is three storks. Yeah, hotel three storks. We will see the sign in a moment because it's at the corner of the building. We are slowly getting to the square on which Valenstein Palace with Valenstein Garden is standing. It's coming to the view on the right hand of the camera and three storks south sign on the right hand. I will just turn back slowly, not much quicker as I don't want you to get dizzy watching this, this tour. So here we are, three storks hotel and now we can go this way so this is this is Valenstein Palace built at the very beginning of 17th century the builder the owner was Albrecht von Wallenstein he was born in our country as most of the nobles he was from Protestant family however his family became very poor and he became orphan. That's why he was then taken care by another Protestant noble. So this new, this friend noble took him and educated him and tried him to be also a Protestant. But you know, I'm not yet going there. I would like to show you this first because it's quite beautiful, complex, and I will go a little bit zooming the other way. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yes. Mm doesn't work yeah it's not yeah that's what I wanted you to see so you have the entrance there is a little courtyard and this house because I think it's really nice so I want you also see sorry that's too far I'm not sure this uh, zoom is playing with me I'm very sorry so this is going a little bit up the hill you can see the cathedral tower there, but there is one interesting, interesting memorial. And I like the square, which is at the, at the moment called the Senate Street, but used to be Five Church, Five Church Street. So the name was Five Churches. And we are going to look at the special memorial in the middle of the square. In 1950s, we had processes here. That's the time when Stalin died, Gottfall died. Processes, a lot of people were executed. So that's around 1950s when one of the ladies, she was not from Communistic Party, but she was from National Socialist Party, and she was accused She's a spy, and then she was executed. At this moment, she's a symbol of freedom. So you can see the memorial. This is supposed to be the place where she gave the speech, the witness speech at the court. She was talking like a little bird, and her name was Milada Horákova. Then she was executed with a group of other people. So her name is written here, Milada Horákova. I'm falling, I'm falling. I lost this fight. I am leaving. I love this country. I love these people. Build a fortune for it. I'm leaving. I have no uh, hate to you. And I wish you, 
I wish you that her last words. So I wanted you to see it. And by the way, if you will go one of the really good restaurants here, it's a Golden Well restaurant. And that's this hidden street. Just go there and at the end of the street, it's a restaurant. It has terrace close to the castle, close to the castle gardens and the Golden Well Hotel. Uzlaté Studně. And one beautiful building with even more beautiful balcony with green flowers and gold, uh, green leaves and gold flowers on it. He lived fa uh, really famous people like Peter Brandl, who was a um, uh, painter, Baroque painter. So we are talking about 17th, 18th century. And here we are talking about 19th, 20th century. That's Josef Fanta. The one, if you have watched uh, recently, I have posted some pictures from the main train station. That's his work. This is the architect responsible for main train station and also for the shop, the beautiful shop of Moser Glass, if you have been to. So this man lived in this house, this architect. And we are slowly going back to Wallenstein Palace to see the garden, finally. So, Wallenstein grew up in this Protestant family, but, you know, he was already since childhood extremely ambitious. And, and also, he was a good side because he was like, okay, I can be a Protestant as I was born, as I was educated. Or I can be a Catholic and join the power of the emperor. So what should I choose? Who do you think will win? Protestant or Catholics? I don't know. I don't know. And finally he chose the side of emperor because he believed emperor is going, is the, the first man and is going to win. So he chose the Catholic side. And when finally the Thirty Years' War started, uh, which happened with throwing people out of the window in 1618. The Protestants went to the castle and threw Catholic officers out of the window, started the Years' War in Europe, and Wallenstein at these days was already standing side by side with Catholics and helped them win at White Mountain, like a Waterloo for us, White Mountain, not far from from the castle uh, and we have lost thanks to him also so he was able to build this palace this palace was bu built before the uh, actually during sorry during the war in 1620 they started to build this palace it's uh, valentine was also um, very ambitious so he wanted to became to have a very high position if possible maybe have a palace bigger than the castle is maybe become king of the country so uh, not any every dream counts so if you dream high that's the only chance how to how to go high so he was dreaming high but you remember he was born to a poor family so what he did he married a lady, she was very rich. Unfortunately, she died, but don't look there any murder or something. She died and he got a lot of money. With the second marriage, he also got a lot of money. And then 1618, it started 1620, uh, we lost. And all the nobles and citizens, the rich ones who were on the side of Protestants, they had to either leave the country, convert the, or were executed. However, all their properties were taken and, and uh, cheaply sold. Wallenstein bought the properties from his fortune from the wife and sold more expensive. And that's how he got a lot of money and was able to build this palace with the courtyard. There is one, there is one, there was one on the left hand side. And that's Renaissance and early Baroque uh, palace. You have a chance to see, I think, one or two pictures I have posted on Facebook. There is also face of Wallenstein, so you can see him. There is a picture because 
every Saturday from 9 to 4, you can visit the palace and see its interior. So that's one of the main halls with the fireplace. And there is a big scene on which Wallenstein is shown like a god Mars, Mars like the planet, god of war. So he's shown on this painting inside of the palace. The palace is used by the parliament of Czech Republic and it's, this is a Senate, this part of parliament. It's called Senate. So Senate building. And with these doors, more or less a little bit hidden, we are entering the beautiful garden. So before I go to the garden, just look here, these doors are leading to a secret room which is closed for public. But on my Facebook I have made this album with pictures that should be connected with the story I'm telling. So that's the place where you will find the face of Wallenstein, but also you will find a short clip opening the door, getting inside and being in a cave-like uh, area with pebble floor and it's called the spa for your mind spa for your soul you are not swimming there you are not having massage but you are supposed to contemplate sit there in between all the stones and this is the beautiful Wallenstein garden it's the second biggest garden uh, in Prague the biggest one is at the castle because it's all around the castle so it's pretty big however this one is the second biggest garden in Prague and about 24 houses one brickyard and a couple of smaller gardens have to be taken down for building opening this garden and that's the first so-called palace like garden before there was like a palace separated and then there was a garden separated and this is the first place where it was all built somehow together to fit together to communicate and one of the symbols of this connection is Sala Terena it's in many gardens. We have we, we have seen one during the Kampa tour. We have made tours already like one week ago. But this is the most famous Sala Terena. Again, I'm going zooming. So I'm sorry if it's yeah going not the, the way. Yes. So here we are having the Sala Terena. So when it was built, it was seen as a one room or one hall, big room, big hall of the palace, which is missing one wall. That's the one in front of us, open to the garden. So that's how they saw it. It was made for enjoying the time, any weather. Usually it was because of the sun, but also because of the rain. Now I'm going back to standard. Yeah, that's, that was too much. I'm sorry, this is just a little bit difficult how to do the zooming. Okay, I hope this is, uh, this is a good one. So Sala Terena has absolutely gorgeous acoustic. That's why they do concerts, but also some theater performances and so on. The whole garden was done like 1620. So it's the time of the, of the Third Years' War, which you can see some scenes. However, that's only representation. That's it looks like the Thirty Years' War on a picture. However, it re it's representing the Trojan War. Here at the top painting, we have a picture of Zeus, his wife Hera, and the goddess of love Aphrodite. And the whole fight which is going on in this, on this Sala Terena is about the Trojan War. You know the story. Paris, Greek, uh, Greek son of a king, was enjoying his time somewhere at the fields, and three goddess joined him, and he was supposed to choose the most beautiful, uh, choose the most beautiful one of them, and he chose Aphrodite, gave her the apple. She promised him the love of the most beautiful lady in the world, which was Helen of Troy. Unfortunately, she was already married, having a husband, the king of Troy. That's how it started. 
and here we are looking at some other paintings and you see that looks a little bit like a mermaid but it has wings because the Trojan War are not uh, you probably remember the name of Odysseus when he was getting back from the war he was traveling I think seven years or nine years pretty long time and in once one island the sirens with a beautiful voice were calling him and his sailors to stop by so these are the sirens and the Trojan War you we all know how it ended up uh, the Trojans were a long time fighting uh, tro because Helena ran away with, uh, with Paris. Then they had, oh, I'm not that good. I thought that I know it perfectly, but I see I'm not that good. However, definitely it was in Troya when the Greeks finally were on siege. So they were fighting for Troya, wanting to get in. So on that side, we can see these are the people of Troy. And they were, they were guarding the place. And on the other side, we have people of Greeks. Who else fought on the Greek side was, for example, Achilles or Achille, we call him Achilles. Achille, who was pretty, having only one weak place, which was his, his uh, feet that was danger for him so long fights a lot of uh, a lot of heroes like Achille, Achilles Achille died then Odysseus make the trap he made the horse and give it to Trojan gave it to Trojans they were thinking yeah the war is over we are getting a gift big wooden horse took it inside but in the horse they were Greeks hiding, killed all the Trojans, and how the war, that's how the war ended. I will talk about it even later. But the reason why they have chosen this Trojan situation, the war, was exactly corresponding with the period when the whole garden and the, uh, the palace was built. 30 years war, 1620 to 1630. So that was corresponding. The whole, the whole garden is decorated with beautiful statues. This is one of them, like Eros and Aphrodite in the middle of the fountain. Unfortunately, the Thirty Years' War ended for us 1648 with Swedish army robbing the castle and robbing also this palace. And all the statues from here were taken and brought to at Drottningholm to the museum in Stockholm in Sweden. You can find some pictures again on my Facebook. This is the only statue that was brought back. However, honestly, this is a copy. The original, we have it in the museum. But one statue we were able, which is the fountain, we were able to get back. All the others that we have here, uh, we didn't get back. They are in Drottningholm and we have copies that were made only 100 years ago. The whole garden was made for all your senses. So you see a beautiful Salaterena. You can see all the beautiful paintings there. It goes also to your mind. Like, let's think about history. Let's think about, uh, learn from the history. Let's hear the stories. So that's what was it about. So Sala Terena from here. By the way, a lot of painters were painting uh, Sala Terena on their pictures, old postcards and so on. Then it's also for your nose. You can send the, f the f not flowers, the blooms, the trees. At the moment, uh, horse chestnuts. So horse chestnuts, that's all these white trees are in the bloom. It's a bit early. I think they are only starting to come out. But mm, I don't smell them that much yet. But because it's cold, you know, when the sun is fully in, in work and it's warmer than, than the sand, it's much nicer. So that was for the eyes, for the sand, also for your ears that for example, the water falling down in a fountain, it's not only like for your breath, for fresh air, but also for the sound 
of the water falling down. And last but not least for your ears, it's also this cage for birds. There were supposed to be a lot of birds singing. At this moment, uh, we don't have here singing birds. We have here owls, bubo bubo, the biggest owls we have in our country. And if I spread my arms, I will be as big as bubo bubo. I will be as big as the bird if he or she wants to fly. They are during the day as owls, they are sleeping. But on Facebook you will find picture, even picture of the baby, baby owl. So it's there. And for entertainment, for your eyes, for your fun, for your mystery, was also made this dripstone wall. Dripstone wall with a lot of details. So we see frog, we see snake, and we will see some more. So that was made like a funny thing. It was extremely expensive to make it. But you know, who else than Wallenstein then can do this type of garden and of posh palace just to impress his guests, impress the people he want to fight with, impress the people he joined. So another snake party here and here. And that's the biggest wall around here. At this moment, we are just looking at it. But uh, during Valentine time, it was possible to enter through the, there are a couple of small doors. It was possible to go like behind and travel behind the wall have a little secret tete a tete, like I mean meeting with the lady of your heart. There are windows from the tunnels going through the wall or there is even like a balcony here, balcony there. So you can either have a talk like a spy talk, talking about the situation on the battlefield or you can talk with your lady. That was always chance to use this dripstone wall. It's quite interesting it's, if you are in a viewpoint at the castle, nicely visible from there is this, this wall. I like it because there is a lot of details and time to time I'm discovering new face or new animal being there. I'm not sure if it's not dark too much, but there is sitting a monkey then there is another face hiding here. So uh, I will try to go a little bit closer. So bear with me because this is always difficult when I want, yeah, sorry, to do it. But anyway, let's find if we can see some faces. Ah, yes, there is a face, there is a face. So up there, some impish faces then another faces are a little bit down here yeah here we have it another one another one here you can look you can spend here some time find some animals big cats dragons um, and impy faces as we did right now so i just want to show you i know there is the big cat lion's head just here so stay with the big Zoom, here we have him. The lion head is exactly here. But as I told you, there is so many little details. Sometimes you miss them. Uh, another impish face is up there. So let's look. Let's make it, yeah. Just now in the middle is another face. Maybe they are laughing about how we people down here are having our troubles and now in the middle you have a beautiful either dragon or snake with a with a thong coming out now i'm trying to go smoothly back yeah this is good this is nice so what who was Wallenstein as well he was the army leader generalissimo he got this name from the emperor, like being the head of big Habsburg 
uh, Habsburg army, but also he believed in horoscopes. So one of other men involved in his life was Johannes Kepler. You can find his face on my Facebook page. By the way, this is what I love. Yeah, I love there are wooden stairs going up behind the window behind the rail. So uh, Johannes Kepler, pretty famous. You can, he was in Prague around the 1602. Uh, he was here with, uh, invited and with uh, Tycho Brahe, who was Danish astronomer. And they were here in Prague. Uh, Johannes Kepler wrote here three sun laws about the planets moving around, around the sun and so on. I'm showing you red chestnut or pink chestnut at the moment. And Johannes Kepler also made horoscopes. And Wallenstein, of course, the rich man, asked the horoscope from the best of best from Johannes Kepler. And Johannes Kepler made him a horoscope. He started to work on it. He looked at the planets, birthday, birth hour, and he was working on it, working on it. And then he discovered something is going to happen. Something not really good is going to happen in 1634. And you don't want to be the one who is bringing bad message to anyone, especially not to uh, Wallenstein, ambitious, rich man who never was going too far for uh, sword for fight. So Johannes Kepler finished his horoscope with the year 1634, gave it to Wallenstein and then decided to leave the country. You know, it's better, I have some work, they have invited me to some scientist company, so I'm going to leave, I will be there. And he left the country. What surprises me, Wallenstein haven't asked, why are you leaving? Why is there the 1634 and nothing after this year? No questions were asked, and you, I believe you know what happened in 1634. Wallenstein was already a little bit sick. He was, uh, that was all, always these uh, illnesses uh, of the rich people. So he was sick and still army leader, still people were scared of him. However, they were thinking what to do with him. The king, the emperor was told that Wallenstein is cheating on him, that he plans some plot against him, that he wants to become king emperor, he wants to kill him, assassinate him. So there was a lot of questions asked what to do with Wallenstein. And finally it was decided. We probably don't need him this much. The world will probably be a bit better place without him. So now I am going to show you that's still the castle on a hill. That's the end of the castle. This is the only private palace, Lobkowitz Palace. Another very famous lady, Polixena of Lobkowitz, the one who brought, uh, who gave the statue of baby infant Jesus to the church and who served this lady in this palace, actually saved the two men who were thrown out of the window from royal office. They ran away at the garden and Polixena of Lobkowitza hit them here in 1618. Today is the only private palace and castle. The Lobkowitz family live there and partially they, run, they have a museum. And I like this is the balcony. You can buy audio guide for the balcony and the, the tour is called Prague Inspires. And the members of the family who are standing at the balcony watching Prague all around, of course, seeing the wall and seeing this garden. And the members of the family are telling you like what you see, what's on the view, but also stories like just this way, the direction to Petrin Hill, it's the place where my husband proposed me with the ring and so on. So it's not only like a official touristical stories, but also they private stories. Ah, back to Wallenstein. Finally, he was in Hep, 
which is Western Bohemia, beautiful city, and at night sleeping. Almost all his all his friends left him because the situation around him was, you know, you never know what can happen to him. So they left him. Only one one uh, like script or servant was with him, and three English soldiers came to his apartment and assassinated him, killed him during the night. So that's pretty embarrassing for a big commander, army leader, Generalissimo, being assassinated in a night gown during the night. You'll find a picture of the assassination in, on the Facebook in this album. So that's the end of uh, Wallenstein, but we are still in his garden looking at the beautiful copies of the statues. What is interesting, the copies were done in 1910 by Adolf Wallenstein, also a member of the family, and they used the originals to make a form of Adrien de Vries statues. And so copy from 1913 and now being in Sweden, taken from Prague in 1648 to Sweden, being at Drottningholm Castle. So these are the copies made by Wallenstein family again, by 1910-1913. Author Adrian de Vries was a court sculpture on the court of Rudolf II, one of our most famous emperors, we, but we don't talk about him today. And uh, this Adrien de Vries was already old, so this was his last, last uh, work, the statues for the garden, and then he died, and he is buried here in St. Thomas Church. His face also, you can find it on my Facebook page. So there is a lot of, a lot of statues, again, from Greek mythology, all connected with Trojan War. So the fighters here... On the other side, we have, we have Venus and Adonis. So Venus is sitting, Adonis is bringing the gold. On the other side there, we have Neptune. Neptune, the god of, of sea, of water, with a dog. And we can touch the dog. It looks like the tourists started to touch the dog for luck because otherwise his nose will not be so shiny. So why not? Let's, let's polish the dog's nose. You can make a wish. Because that's, that's how we usually say that it works. I quite like, no, not, I wouldn't say like, but uh, quite, uh, quite interesting is the story of this man, Lao Kon. We are back at the Troia. We are back at Odysseus having the horse giving the wooden horse to Trojans and one man from from Troja is like don't get the horse Trojans it's some trap let's leave it outside don't take the horse inside but the gods were not on the side of Trojans at this moment so they were like you are spoiling the trap Laocon so they sent a big snake who killed Laocon that's the big snake and his two little sons. So Lakon died, his two sons died. Trojan horse was standing in front of the gates and the Trojan people were like, you see what happened? That's definitely a sign that we have to bring the horse inside. And they took the horse inside and we already know what happened. So Laocon, that's quite popular, topic for statues you see a man fighting the ho fighting the uh, the snake and usually with two sons so that's exactly the situation here it's pretty good work the the head of the snake with the tongue coming out of his mouth with all the teeth against the the, the sky today we have like this was the color of the sky when i left home i was like mm, it's completely definitely going to rain then it was beautiful sunny day so far till today so let's hope it will stay until we finish the tour ah, what is here another statue bacchus bacchus with a little satyr so they are having wine because bacchus is the god of wine of fun of party so wine 
grapes, I mean, and a little stir. And a beautiful view back with the dramatic sky, Sala Terena. We came from the little door here, that's where we came through the palace, and castle with cathedral in there. I think this is really beautiful view. And that one, that's the Apollo, God of Apollo. By the way, my favorite story is about Apollo and Marcias. If you have chance, find it. It's extremely sad, extremely sad about Apollo and Marcias, but about Sater, Marcias and Apollo fighting for the love of, of the goddess Athena. They are playing music. The best, the better one will Athena. The worst one is going to be killed. The story is extremely sad, but yeah, just wanted you to know one of the stories. That's kind of a maze here. Some people I have to find my way and again. We listen to the sound of water. So here we go, in between the that's trees making kind of like a maze and another entrance to the garden is from the wall on my right hand. So let's see it, I will take you outside. When you walk on the other side of the wall, that's where the trams are, cars are. I don't like to walk it because that street is not much nice for walking. But I will take you there to see it. why I take you here. Because I also want to show you this wall, which is now behind the tram. And last week we've been to Kampa Island and we have finished at Voyano Vesadi with peacocks. That's behind here. The entrance is somewhere there, but that's exactly here. So trams, cars and so on. That's why I don't... You see, even people are not allowed to walk here. So if you have chance, don't walk it preferably go through the garden. There is another picture of the interior of the Senate building. It's going to be open days on 8 May, where you can visit even more places in Wallenstein Palace. Not only the ones you see almost every Saturday. And swing concert, it starts, May starts to be like a bigger touristic life, not like this, which is, which is a little bit cold. Like two weeks ago, we had the warmest day in 270 years, the warmest day in April, but now it looks pretty cold. We are supposed to have even snow at the weekend, so let's see what's going to happen. Uh, some other statues, uh, like from Adrian de Vries, Another situation, big fight, one man trying to kill another man. That's the fight of the good habits against the bad habits. So it's a fight like within one person. The good of him is killing the bad in him. So that's this one. Then we have Hercules statue, which is in the middle of another fountain here. Hercules saving his wife because there is this centaur, half horse, half person who is trying to steal wife of Hercules and Hercules is saving her from him. Also, the dog is here on the side of centaur, so he is helping centaur, that's the dog. and. The wife of Hercules sitting at the back of the horse of the Kentaur, and here we have it. Hercules and Kentaur. So that's another fountain. And the last and biggest is this pond. So the story of this pond is also interesting. It was made as a pond for boat trips. Again, for fun, to enjoy it, to enjoy time. So this was used for boat trips, but in the 19th century, one man, Bozek, 
who was in Czech inventor. He invented, like a second person in the world, he invented a car on a steam, so steam car. He used it. Then he invented a steamboat. Only a small one, like I will show you, like the size as this. He made a model in this size and tried it on this, on this pond, if it works. And it worked, it was pretty big success. So he created a bigger one, the real size, took it on the river and invited rich people, rich guests, to do this boat trip on a real, real steamboat. And it was a big success. They paid a lot of money for the ride and it was successful. Unfortunately, someone stole the money box full of these entrance fees for the boat, which a lot of nobles were there. And Brozik for the situation went bankrupt because of the robber. And he was sick of it. He was like, if this happens, I don't care anymore. I'm not inventor anymore. And he broke the car, the steam car. He broke the boat and never use it anymore. So a little bit sad story, which started or part of it was the pond here. And in the middle again, Hercules fighting some monster and the pond full of carps, golden carps, white carps, koi fish. They just flow. Yeah, they were here, but now they left. Ah, here they are, at least some of them. So these are pretty big carps, but they're also white ones like a koi fish and orange ones. And let's see, you know that we have a white peacock here and the blue peacock as well. Peacocks are there inside that's orchids, but they are, yeah, they are in bloom. Here they are not in bloom, but on the inside we can see orchids in bloom, but that's pretty big reflection. So we don't see much from the greenhouse. But we have a white peacock and it's not albino because look at his eyes, they are blue. Albino will have red, red eyes. And if you have white peacock and white peahen, you can have white babies. But who is here? That's a black, blue peahen. That's another lady. So probably not mating together. Sometimes when he's mating, he shows beautifully his feathers, his tail. Let's look at the crown he has. I just don't want to disturb him that much. It must be horrible for him. But so many people look at him, interested, and so on. So I'm leaving him. And this is, this, this is a man. This is a peacock. Looks a little bit like peahen, but he lost his tail. It's probably going to grow. Hopefully, because the mating season is now. So I hope he's going to have a chance to grow his, we call it tail. Uh, if you want to uh, have peacocks as a pet, they actually are supposed to do really good pets. But what can be a little bit danger is that they are very loud. So your neighbors will not be happy if you have a peacock and he will start to make the sounds because that can be very loud. However, it's a good guardian. If the rubber comes to home, you don't need this uh, machine. Like, yeah, but it's okay to have a peacock. Someone will enter, he will start to cry, and everyone in perimeter one, one kilometer will be awake because of the voice. So this is a blue boy with a nice feathers. And let's just look at the beautiful beautiful feathers hopefully it's not moving at the moment so that's colors that's something that's what i like yeah and now we have a couple white boy and white lady so we can only hope that he will try to seduce her and do the mating dance but doesn't look like much maybe it's already too late or too cold or it's actually not so many people around so i would think that they will be mating but anyway let's look this way back 
for the through the pond back to the garden. You can hear a little bit the peacock crying, the one behind me. But honestly, last year I saw the blue one. She was having three babies, but I haven't seen white babies yet. So you should go together and do something about it. We would like to see white, white chickens. Okay, maybe next time. Not today, definitely. So the, they were, they were, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I was just shocked. Yeah, that's the white, white peacock. He's probably unhappy what I am telling. So that's why he made the noise. Imagine your neighbor had his, him as a pet and then you see that you definitely don't want it. But what I've heard, they are pretty nice. They are friendly. If they know you, of course, they can sit on your lap and eat. If you will have some food, they will probably take it from you, some bread and eat it. That's what I have read, like experience from some peacock owners. I forgot what I was talking about before he made the sound. It completely uh, get me out. So hopefully nothing that much important. Yeah, I know what I wanted to say. So the peacocks, the, there were also some other animals quite some time already from 19th century. A long time the garden was closed with exception. In this 19th century, it was used two days. It was Thursday, like today, and a Sunday. On a Thursday, as it was a working day, it was visited only by the high class people. It was like posh walking by, enjoying the garden, the smell, the sound, uh, the views, the animals. And on Sunday, when it was open the second day, then everyone was coming, poor people as well as the rich, but mostly poor people because they were working during the week. So that was their chance to enter the place without hesitation and without having to be at work. So we can see here the plan of the garden. So what we have done so far, we have started somewhere around here at the little town square. Then we entered through these doors, through palace, opening the gardens, watching Sala Terena, the first fountain, then the wall, which is, uh, that's the cage with owls, the wall, the chestnuts, then this is the row with the statues, and then we make it as the doors. Then we make it like this, around the pond, with the peacocks here, and we are here, where is the exit? So it's time to finish our tour. I hope you have enjoyed it. I will highly appreciate, and it gives me chance to go on with these tours. If you support me on PayPal, Prague by KATY gmail.com or buy me a coffee Prague by KATY it's highly appreciated and really helps me to go on next week I don't plan any tour I am at work and the next next week I'm thinking about it I am also on a trip uh, but I would definitely like to do a tour there it's in Tallinn Helsinki if not a virtual tour like live stream at least i will make pictures photos and maybe even some clip for youtube anyway i hope i'll i will be able to do, do the live stream i will plan something and then if i don't have time i will have to cancel it but you will know if you follow me on facebook you will have all the information there so please when this uh, video will be processed somewhere in tomorrow like it and uh, comment it so I can have more audience which will be highly appreciated if you have any questions write me now <laughs> not now or never but now or on Facebook if you have any wishes you want to see something then also ask for it and I have some plans but also it's good uh, to know what your audience is interested in also I will be ha happy to follow your dreams and wishes have a beautiful day and see you see you hopefully somewhere soon on facebook stay with me stay connected and now i'm the only switching and now one last view to the beautiful castle 
pond and have a lovely day.